Greetings, this is Dyslexi from the Armor Community Group, Shack Tactical. In cooperation with Bohemian Interactive, I'm creating a series of videos to explain some of the basics of Armor 3. Today we'll be discussing the usage of two types of specialized infantry roles, the Sniper and the Anti-Tank or Anti-Aircraft Launcher Team. We'll be covering general tips of how they can be employed effectively. Snipers are designed to scout and engage enemies from greater distances than typical infantry, while launcher teams can knock out heavy vehicles that infantry are otherwise powerless to defeat. We'll look at snipers first, then move on to the launcher teams next. Snipers tend to operate in small groups some distance from supporting forces. Due to this, you must take extra measures to conceal yourself and avoid drawing undue attention from the enemy. Your ghillie suit is intended to camouflage as well as break up your silhouette to make it harder to detect. The key to this being effective lies in picking intelligent places to hide. Nobody's going to believe that a bush laying on a road isn't a person. Whereas picking a wooded area or patches of terrain that match the ghillie's colors is using it the way it was meant to be used. The same can be said of movement. A key distinguishing feature between an actual bush and a sniper in a ghillie suit is that the bush isn't going to stand up and start walking. So stay low, move slowly, and take your time. Be aware that being a sniper isn't all about racking up a kill count from a distance. A good sniper team not only delivers precision fires, they also deliver intelligence. Spotting the enemy and communicating this to the rest of the team can be more significant than just popping off shots. Sometimes you'll do far more damage simply by talking your teammates through an area, warning them of dangers, or helping them to focus their efforts. When you do need to shoot, you'll want to have a solid understanding of what you're using as a weapon, how far you're shooting, and how that distance influences things, as well as what your target should be. We'll look at the M320 rifle as an example of a sniper's weapon. This is a 408 caliber rifle with a 7 round magazine and a high power scope. Looking through the scope reveals a standard mil dot reticle. This is a first focal plane reticle, which means that the reticle scales according to the zoom level. The details of how mil dot ranging works is a bit beyond this video, but if you intend to be a high speed sniper, you'll want to look into it. Usage of a rangefinder simplifies the process, which most sniper spotter teams will have access to in some form. Armor 3 allows you to adjust your sight ranging. Once you know the range to your target, simply adjust as needed and the center of your crosshair will correspond to that distance. Bear in mind that at extended ranges, the bullet will fly significantly above your point of aim during its flight to the target and will strike with less force than at closer ranges. When you're preparing for an engagement, choose your targets carefully. Focus on high value targets, leaders, people with powerful weapons, and similar. You generally want to aim for the center of the visible mass of whatever you're shooting at. While headshots can be achieved at closer ranges, a good chest or upper torso hit will kill just as well and has a benefit of offering a larger target area and less chance for a near miss. You'll want to fire from the most stable stance available to you. Good positions will generally allow you to fire from the prone or in a sitting posture if grass obscures a prone perspective. Before firing, make use of your breath hold key. By default, this happens when holding your right mouse button down. This will help to give you temporary aim stabilization and is essential for long range accuracy. Be precise. A single shot is hard to detect, so make your first one count. Remember that firing repeatedly from the same location makes it much easier for the enemy to find you and return fire. Waiting for other battlefield noise to occur before firing can help to mask the sound of your shots, as well as potentially keep the enemy from realizing that they're taking sniper fire, as well as what other other contact they might have. Most importantly, Know when you've become compromised and need to bug out. Sticking around as a two-man sniper team to face off against a concerted enemy push to find and destroy you will not end well for you, particularly if the enemy brings force multipliers like armor, air, or artillery against you. Moving on from snipers, let's take a look at another specialized infantry role, that of anti-tank and anti-aircraft launchers. Rocket or missile launchers come in a few different forms with three primary goals either to kill vehicles, aircraft, or infantry. Anti-tank launchers are either guided, like the Titan Short and the PCML, or unguided, like the RPG-42. Guided projectiles are known as missiles, while unguided are designated as rockets. Some launchers will have the capability to load different types of rounds, such as anti-tank and anti-infantry munitions. Rocket launchers have reticles that are calibrated for the drop of the rocket over range. This is the RPG-42's reticle. You can see that there are crosshairs corresponding to the point of aim from 50 to 500 meters. 
To use it, match the distance of your target with the correct reticle aim point and take your shot. Missile launchers, on the other hand, are primarily concerned with locking on the targets, be they anti-tank launchers or anti-aircraft. To lock, click your right mouse button while aiming at a target. You'll see a box appear, then a diamond fade in over it. When the diamond turns solid, your lock is acquired and you can fire your missile. The Titan Short is one launcher with some additional functionality. While it can lock on the targets and automatically track them, it can also be fired in an unlock mode in which it will track along with the launcher's aim point. This can be used to precisely engage structures, infantry, or other targets that can't otherwise be locked. When it comes to the tactics used with launchers, the general theme is to act in a manner that respects the tremendous power of the sorts of vehicles and aircraft you'll be engaging. Agitating a tank by missing it with an anti-tank rocket is not conducive to your long-term survival. It's better to just blow them up and be done with it on the first shot, so make that first shot count. You generally want to strike armored targets either on their sides, their rear, or from above. The frontal armor is the strongest and hardest to defeat. Also, keep in mind where they're looking. You can tell where the driver and gunner are looking by the orientation of the vehicle and the turret. Firing from the front means the driver is likely to see your launch signature and communicate to the rest of the crew, as well as try to evade it. While firing when the turret is facing you, it's an easy way to get yourself promptly exploded. Try to fight vehicles in dense terrain. It's much easier to knock out a tank or similar in an urban area at close range than it is to try and hit them from a distance in more open terrain. Luring vehicles into towns or cities also allows you to fire them from above, making it that much harder for them to counter you. Try to select keyhole positions in which you can only be seen or engaged from a narrow angle. Knocking out a tank is great, but if his buddies saw you fire and return the favor, your victory celebration may be dramatically cut short. If you're using rockets against armor, it helps to have multiple gunners ready to engage. If the first gunner misses, he can rapidly communicate the adjustment needed to the second gunner, who can use that information to improve his chances for a hit. When dealing with aircraft, one must keep in mind that many are equipped with flare dispensers designed to lure heat-seeking missiles away from the target aircraft. Because of this, you want to take extra care to fire only when the aircraft isn't looking in your direction. Giving them advanced warning allows them to fire off their flares and potentially defeat the missile. Some dispensers will detect the launch of a missile and engage automatically. If this is the case, you may need to fire two missiles in rapid succession to get a higher probability for a kill. Two separate anti-air gunners are ideal for this. Try to hit the aircraft when they're slow and if possible, engage them from the rear or sides for maximum effect. The key to survival, whether you're an anti-tank or anti-aircraft gunner, is to stay aware of your environment. Stay aware of the enemy threat and employ your weapons such that the odds are stacked as highly in your favor as possible. As with all things, practice makes perfect. The more time you invest in learning how to fight tanks and aircraft as a launcher equipped infantry, the more likely you are to succeed when it matters. For more community guide videos, be sure to subscribe to the official Armor 3 YouTube channel. For other Armor 3 updates, keep track of the official website, Facebook, and Twitter pages. If you'd like more in-depth tutorial and multiplayer gameplay of Armor 3 and previous Armor games, I'd also recommend you check out my channel, here. This is Dyslexi. And I'll see you on Altus.